Welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast, brought to you by Active Management, the world's leading fitness business coaches who in 2015 will help you hashtag grow your business. This is the world's number one podcast for fitness business owners and managers. We interview real owners and learn what has been working for them to make them so successful. Here's the host of the Fitness Business Podcast, Chantal. I hope all of you are having a fantastic December so far. As you know, throughout the month of December, we are celebrating women in fitness. Now, last week in show 29, we had the amazing Amy Dixon. And this week, I am thrilled to introduce you to the regional director of Exos Medifit and the chairperson of URSA, Molly Kemmer. Now, Molly has a wealth of experience in the fitness industry and has spent the past three and a half years working with Exos Medifit. It's a business that provides fitness center management, design innovation, and performance solutions and works with clients including leading corporations, academic institutions, health systems, elite athletes, sports team, the US military, community centres, residential communities and specialty recreational facilities. That's a lot in there. Now during the interview I chat to Molly about women in leadership roles, the importance of working with a mentor or coach, the role that experience plays in long-term success, advice for new people starting out in the industry, plus Molly shares her top tips on how to succeed in your career. It was such a pleasure talking to Molly and I think as I was, many of you will feel really inspired from today's interview. Now, don't forget our current giveaway. We've actually got two ways that you can win a prize just by listening to the Fitness Business Podcast. As usual, you can win our giveaway just by subscribing to the show notes on the podcast, which is heading over to Fitness businesspodcast.com, clicking subscribe in the right-hand corner, and that is your automatic entry. Otherwise, just tell us your number one insight from listening to one of the shows. Now, to do that, you can comment on the show notes of your favorite show or of this week's show. You can leave a comment on our Facebook page. You can tweet us, which is at FitBizPodcast, or you can pop a comment under any of our Instagram posts, and our account there is Fitness Business Podcast. So there are loads of places that you can tell us your insight and every time you tell us, you get an entry into the draw. So you're probably wondering what's the amazing prize that we're giving away. Well, over December and January, we are giving away Michelle Seagar's book, No Sweat. Michelle's actually an upcoming guest on the show. She's going to be appearing in show 33, which comes out on January the 8th. One book will go to our new subscriber and one book will go to someone who shares their number one insight. So jump on now and either comment or subscribe to the show. Okay, that's it, guys. Let's dive into my interview with Molly Kemmer. So first of all, I want to say a very warm welcome to the show, Molly. We're absolutely thrilled to have you part of the Women in Fitness series. Chantal, thank you so much for having me today. I'm delighted to be here. I appreciate it. Now, I believe that you've been a member of URSA since 1999, and we're going to talk about some of the changes that you've seen in the industry shortly. But tell us, what's it like to be the chairperson of URSA? It's a huge responsibility, huge honor and opportunity. And ultimately, every day I think about the impact and the potential impact in this role. What are the opportunities there? What's at hand? What's needed? And as you know, our industry is at a peak of maturation right now. We have seen insurmountable changes, you know, just since I've been part of the industry in the last 20 plus years in terms of really conquering this global inactivity and global obesity epidemic. We have not yet moved the needle in terms of our impact there and what we can do globally to affect that. So that's first and foremost on my mind in terms of the role and what it involves. It's really about impact in that regard for health, global health. And I I definitely want to talk to you even in more detail about that later on. Do you want to, is there, is there something specific that you're really hoping to achieve whilst you're in the position? I think given the timing within our industry and given that we are in a phase of maturation, it's really about thinking strategically for the industry, thinking strategically for the organization so that we have relevance in terms of moving forward in the next 20 years to represent uh, the global industry and the impact we're trying to make as an industry, making sure that we are growing, 
protecting, promoting the industry. Molly, as I mentioned right at the very beginning, our focus this month is is all about women in fitness and leadership roles in the fitness industry. What have you seen change or improve in the industry over the years when it comes to women in leadership roles? I've seen big changes, Chantal, and I'm very excited because I think there's more changes at hand and the best is yet to come. Much to it, I think, is the way that women work. And this has been true in my personal career in the industry, and I've seen it with others as well. I think for so long, women, in order to step into leadership roles, we feel we need to be invited. And that has really played a part in my career, and I'll be eternally grateful to the women and other leaders I've worked with who've invited me to take advantage of opportunities and to step into leadership roles. But I think that that's changing in terms of a female voice, not only in our industry, but leadership as a whole. I think we're finding our own voice and realizing that we don't necessarily need to wait in the wings to be invited, but rather to, as Cheryl Sandberg said, lean in and find that seat at the table and follow our pursuits and our passions and things that mean the most to us. And certainly those opportunities to express that in leadership roles will continue to arise. It sounds like you probably had some some great female role models when you were progressing in your career. Is there anyone in particular that stood out for you, whether they be in the fitness industry or outside of fitness? Most definitely. And I'll say mentors, teachers, friends, women who've really lifted me up and I've learned so much from them. One in particular um, was my partner in crime for years, Paula Newbert, who is still at the helm at Greenwood Athletic and Tennis Club in Greenwood Village here in Colorado. Paula is absolutely amazing. And she didn't wait to be invited into that seat. She saw a need and saw an opportunity and she showed her stripes and really was then asked to step into that role. So I learned a tremendous amount from Paula. I was her assistant general manager for years and we continue to be friends this day. So looking at Paula, looking at Bonnie Patrick Metallion in my current organization, Exos Medifit, um, Bonnie has been in our industry for years and is an, an exceptional teacher, advocate, just a mentor in so many ways to me. And when I think about other women in our industry, Peg Calvario comes to mind, Kay Usby, these were women that participated in my Rex Roundtable and invited me to be a part of that round table. I'll be eternally grateful to those two ladies as well. Thinking outside of our industry, there's a woman that inspires me a lot, and I subscribe to her newsletter and teachings online. It's Marie Forleo, and she formed the B School online. She's a protege of Sir Richard Branson. And Marie combines the essence of femininity with creativity, with exploration in terms of marketing and innovative new ways to express your business and express your business talents. So I think she's a great resource. And also women in my family as well. I have a a couple of aunts that I'm thinking about, um, one in the IT and tech world and the other one in an industrial contract role, both very male-dominated industries. And just whenever I reached a a tricky point in my career, or if I needed support or advice, I would reach out to them frequently as well. It's a a great example that the mentors that we work with or the people that we work along the way don't necessarily have to be directly from within within the industry. They can be all walks of life from any part of our lifestyle. If we've got listeners out there that are thinking about selecting a mentor or a coach, what would you recommend as far as how they would go about actually finding someone, finding the right person for them? You know, I do work with a business coach and I'll encourage all women, really anyone in business who's looking to further themselves and their career just to grow and follow their passions. If you think about the highest performing athletes in the world, every single one of them works with a coach. And when I selected my coach, the things I was looking for, her name is Jamie. And when I worked with Jamie initially or interviewed her, it was to find out her approach. And it was really about a value, a belief set. And I knew that she wasn't going to let me off the hook. You know, Jamie, Jamie and I had shared core values in terms of business ethics in terms of succeeding on your own terms, being true to yourself while you're growing. She knew that I held those values dear. And at the same time, she continues to push me and pull me in terms of what I can do. If you know that you have blind spots or weak spots or things that you're working on, you need to find a coach that you can be completely transparent and honest with and that they will hold you in a space where 
they continue to, to train you in those areas, and yet it's safe for you to be right where you are today, if that makes sense. So I think similarly, the Reps Roundtable is my personal experience with that organization. Something that was really important was having it be a sacred place and a place of trust where you can really open up and talk freely about the things that are challenging you, the things you are working on, and to get that perspective, that 360 degree perspective in terms of how you can be better and how you can strive and maybe do things a little bit differently. So I think it's finding a coach, finding a group of mentors or colleagues that you can trust, you feel it's a safe place, they meet you where you are, and they challenge you to be better in every way, shape, and form. And I think that platform of trust allows you also to be open, transparent, and vulnerable so that you can be honest with yourself about, am I self-sabotaging? Are there things I really can be doing differently to improve my performance? And I think it really does just stem back to that environment of trust and respect. Molly, all, the, all these things that we're talking about really are an investment in in your career. Do you think that it's fair for an employer to fund that type of coaching or that type of involvement? You know, I think it, it's individual for each person, Chantal. I really think that for each one of us to set our own goals, to pursue those goals, we need to plan just as we would sit down and, and create a strategic business plan. I highly encourage people to do that for themselves. And more than just once a year, you know, it's like a garden and you have to prune it. So if you're willing to make that um, self-assessment, if you will, and to have the courage to set those goals, if you're willing to do whatever it takes to accomplish those goals, it's worth the investment, whether that comes from yourself or certainly if you have the opportunity to have that at least partially funded or an investment in the part of your employer, my guess is there are many, many people out there listening right now who absolutely have hopes and dreams and aspirations, and perhaps they're not even looking within their organization as to what opportunities they do have. Maybe there's continuing education dollars or credits or a platform where they could reach and grow and be stretched, and they're not taking advantage of it. And if not, that's a personal choice, but it's really uh, growth and money left on the table if they're not. And certainly if that's not within your own organization, look outside your four walls, make that plan, and then come up with a plan for investment that works for you. If you make small investments over time, it does grow cumulatively. It's worth it. That's great advice. Molly, if we were to have a look at your work history and your career within the industry, I, I believe that you've done a number of different roles within a club. Do you think when it comes to leading a team that experience in multiple roles is beneficial? I do think it's beneficial. It has been for me at least. And just speaking with other leaders in our industry, I know many of them have held various roles. I think it just gives you that perspective, the ability to relate to other people, to understand what they're going through in their role, and then to provide solutions and tools for them to be more successful. The other thing is, Chantal, I see people in our industry who, you know, people, human nature, I think, is we tend to do what we're good at and do more of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same with exercise, right? We like to do exercise that we're efficient at <laughs> because it feels good and I feel accomplished. But what we really need is to continue to challenge ourselves to do things that aren't so comfortable if we're going to continue to improve that anaerobic threshold, if you will, <laughs> and to grow. So in business, I think if, if you have had the opportunity to have multiple varying experiences to work with a variety of people in a variety of situations. I think that only makes you more varied in terms of your experience and perspective to help others. I have no doubt that a number of our listeners out there have aspirations to be maybe a director or a general manager of their company. What advice would you give to those people, new people within the industry? You know what, I'm going to come back to something that Paula Newbert and I used to talk about a lot, and that is Attitude is a decision, and the choice to be excellent today is what leads to opportunities in the future. And we really, you cannot live in the future, nor can you live in the past. You can really only live in the moment right now. And who you are, where you are right now is your best opportunity to be excellent and to sow those seeds for future goals and aspirations. So if we've got our head in the clouds and we're thinking too far ahead about, gosh, someday I'd like to do that, don't take your eye off the ball about what you're doing right now. 
Now, Molly, during your introduction, I mentioned Exos MediFit. Do you want to tell us what that's all about? Sure. Exos MediFit, we are a global provider of health, wellness, and fitness solutions. So we're a management company, and we have the opportunity to spread fitness and upgrade lives through many, many audiences. So we're working with corporate employer health and wellness. We're working with military in terms of tactical readiness, community health and wellness centers, and also working with athletes, professional athletes. And so we're bringing fitness to multiple audiences, not only through a tactical expression of that, whether they're coming to us in our facilities that we manage or through technological solutions that provide their success. So when you say facilities that you manage, are the facilities branded under Exos MediFit or do you work in conjunction with a number of other businesses? We work in conjunction with partners. And because we, we are a transparent management company, we're really in the background in that sense. Our goal is to come in and work with a partner to determine the goals for that particular audience, the goals for that particular location, and then to bring up our platform and our mainframe for excellence and combine that with a local flavor, if you will, to really customize solutions that are pertinent to that audience. So that our listeners have a really thorough understanding of how it works, do you want to run us through an example of perhaps someone that would go through the Exos MediFit program or or what a a real life example might look like? Certainly. So our principles, no matter who the audience is, our principles remain the same. And so our four pillars are around mindset, movement, nutrition, and recovery. And by combining our approach around those four principles, we can really tailor that to any audience. So for example, if you're in one of our corporate employer health and wellness settings, you would experience our access principles and methodologies as part of the programming offered there at your site, at your workplace, through workplace wellness programming. If you are a member at one of our commercial sites, one of our community managed sites, you would come in as a health club member and be exposed to that same methodology, the principles, the programming in that setting. Molly, you mentioned that Exos MediFit is a global organisation and needless to say, the healthcare issue is relevant in every single country around the world. What suggestions do you have when it comes to reducing healthcare costs? I think it starts with the individuals and again, meeting people where they are and helping them to be successful. And we can see clearly that many of our methodologies have not worked. The strategies of the past have not worked. So we at Exos, we do take a global approach in terms of the whole person. That's one area that we need to focus on in terms of um, the complexities around obesity and inactivity. This is not a simple one-sided, one-faceted issue. So in terms of meeting individuals where they are, we need to make it easy and accessible. We need to make it fun. We need to make it rewarding, whether that's by focusing on intrinsic motivational behavior change, focusing on extrinsic rewards, such as a financial incentive. It's really, again, a multifaceted approach in terms of, of changing where we are today. And in terms of reducing health care costs, you know, I just spoke about meeting individuals where they are. In terms of working with these larger organizations, whether it's the medical industry, health insurance industries, gosh, somebody's got to go first. And I think it's so easy for each one of our individual industries to continue to point the finger and place the blame in terms of why it's not working. Somebody's got to go first in terms of partnering and coming up with solutions that we're investing in towards investing in health. Absolutely. And talk to me about childhood obesity, because I believe that's a, a topic and issue that you're particularly passionate about. I mean, asking you what the solution is, is a, is a big question, but what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on that and, and your thoughts on where we even start with that? Well, again, children are little people. And when I talked about meeting individuals where they are and talking about making it easy and accessible and fun and rewarding and focusing on their skills and their motivation, setting a ground a groundwork of I can and I want to and I'm worth it. When we see changes in our schools, such as you know dollars being eliminated for physical activity programs in schools, that's going the wrong direction. And in terms of having it only be for fee and organized sport for in order for kids to be exposed to physical activity on a daily basis, um, that can't be the only way. Mm-hmm. So 
having opportunities for it to be spontaneous. Like for example, when we see our our best best in practice corporate employer wellness settings where those organizations are seeing improvement in employee performance, improvement in the organization performance as a result in terms of measurable impact, whether it's employee productivity, the organization as a whole is performing better, the organization is growing, they're attracting top talent. If we apply those principles, learning from an integrated corporate environment where those principles are part of the culture, if we apply those principles for children in their everyday environment and make it a global commitment to do so, I think we'll start to see some impact. It's amazing to hear your ideas and thoughts on these important issues, Molly, and I really hope that the future will bring an opportunity for change. Now, a little change of pace. I believe that you are in Orlando for URSA 2016. Do you want to tell us about next year's conference? Well, URSA continues to be the global leader in providing vetted information for the industry in terms of principles, information, education, the tried and true, the proven methodologies in our industry. This is the best global resource. So anyone out there who's listening, if you've not attended one of these conventions, you absolutely must. It's the very first time being hosted on the East Coast in sunny Orlando. (laughs) And we've already seen uh, great responses from city European market people coming across for the convention. There's just really no way to describe, Chantal, the, the magic that happens when people meet each other in person. Success by Association is what URSA has been founded on for 35 years, going into our 35th here for the convention, and really the chance to meet others in the industry, to make relationships, to do that networking that we talked about earlier, and to see the trends, to see what's happening, what's new, what's current, and then what's future for the industry, to get a finger on that pulse. It's an opportunity not to be missed. And without giving too much away, we've got Ham O'Donnell's going to be speaking on the show as well in regards to telling us a little bit more about some of the speakers that will be there this year and a little bit more in-depth information about URSA for 2016. So that's something very, very exciting that we need to keep an eye on. So Molly, before I let you go for today, and, and first of all, before I even say this, I want to say thank you so much for the information you've already shared with us, but I would love you to give us your top three tips for anyone listening to the show on how to really progress within their career or within their company? It's a great question, Chantal. And if I just reflect from personal experience and what I've learned from others as well, number one would be say yes. If there's an opportunity extended to you, you know, there's a million tapes you could play in your head to say, oh gosh, I don't have the experience for that. Or, oh, I've never done that before. Oh gosh, that sounds scary. Only you can quiet that tape in your head. So quiet it down, turn that volume down and turn up the volume of yes. Just say yes and go for it. So that's first. If given a chance, take it. Secondly, surround yourself with people that are better than you. If you want to have opportunities to grow, you could, again, you could look around and say, gosh, they're in another league. These people are way smarter than I am. Well, that's exactly where you should be. (laughs) Surround yourself with, with teammates that are going to kick your butt and raise you to another level. So look for those people. Look for those people that you admire and you say, gosh, they've really got something. And spend time with them. Ask them to spend time with you. And ask them to challenge you with very difficult questions. And no doubt you'll grow. Number three would be stay current. You know, by current, I mean what's current externally, what's happening in the environment around you, what's happening in the industry around you. And stay current with what's relevant for you. When your passions and your purpose can align with an opportunity, something that's in that external environment, if you see an opportunity or a synergy there to align those things, take it. But if you're not looking, you might might miss that opportunity. That's it. I love that. And I particularly love your first, first answer about saying yes more often and embracing those opportunities when they come up. 
not to be Absolutely. not to be scared of it and um, and just go for it. So, Molly, look, I want to say thank you so much for being a part of our Women in Fitness series. We are thrilled to have you on the show. Mm-hmm. You are such an inspiration. You've achieved so much already in your career, and um, we will be sharing the details of Exos Medifit. We'll be sharing the details of Ursa 2016. All of that will be in today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Molly, thanks again for joining us on the Fitness Business Podcast. Chantal, such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thanks again. The Fitness Business Podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners. Here's a quick word from one of our partners. As you know, this show wouldn't be possible without the support of our amazing sponsors. And one of those sponsors is Rex Roundtables. And I recently had the opportunity to chat with one of their active members, Kevin McHugh from the Atlantic Club. Okay, so I'm here today with Kevin McHugh, the COO of the Atlantic Club. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Well, thank you, Chantel. Now, talk to us a little bit about Rex. What did your business look like before you were a member of Rex? Well, well, actually, we thought we were doing well, and we were regarded as one of the premier health and fitness clubs in the industry by the people in the industry. And uh, without sharing our financials, we changed our business in many ways, which is attributable through our interaction with great clubs that I met through my roundtable and understood better what was possible. When you don't have that opportunity to have that type of interaction three times a year, as well as the continuous flow of emails that we share during the times that we're not together, where we share our best practices, you're operating with possibly a false sense of what's possible. I remember when I joined Rex that we thought we were doing really well in one key area of our business. And then to learn after one of our strategic reviews, which we do at each roundtable meeting, I was close to the bottom uh, in performance of our entire group at the time. Once I realized that, and our team back here realized that, we substantially improved this area of our business thanks to the group's input and sharing of the details and, and seeing what was possible. So, Kevin, what was it that first motivated you to actually select Rex Roundtables? Well... It was after a few years of Ed and Will talking about the benefits that Rex offered and Pat Laws, the owner, and myself finally giving in. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually did not know that much about Rex and didn't know anyone that was in the group that Eddie placed me in. How I didn't know about these club operators was amazing. Uh, the talent, the experience, the business skills that my crew roundtable possesses is a major asset to my personal and professional development over the past four years. I actually wish I met them when I was much younger. I'm a big supporter and I refer Rex pretty much at any opportunity that arises. That's brilliant. And let me ask you this, how long did it actually take for you to integrate it into the business, into what you were doing? And, and then how long did it actually take you to see the benefits? Yeah, I would say that immediately following my my first Rex, that seeds were placed for changes that would take place within the next six months. Pat Laws, the owner of the Atlantic Club, was interested in seeing what the ROI on Rex would be. And it was very clear early in the process that the takeaways and the opportunities far exceeded the investment in time and monies that I placed in it. There are countless improvements that have made we've made to the business. And my Rex Roundtable provides a great vetting and soundboard for ideas and areas of improvement. I mean, it's the sharing of information provides such a great opportunity to manage our businesses. And it's based on real numbers with other real clubs within the industry. And you've been a part of Rex for a little while now. What would you say was the hardest thing when you initially joined? Chantal, I don't know if there's anything really hard about joining Rex. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, the members of the roundtable expect that the time that we spend together in meetings is really productive and on purpose. Mm. We place very high expectations on the takeaways that we get from each session, and we hold our facilitator, Eddie Talk, very high in making sure that we achieve those and that everyone's prepared when they come together. There is a clear expectation from 100% of the group that every time we meet, that we're going to really leave with um, strong things off the agenda. Kevin, let me ask you this. What what have been some of those benefits? You've already touched on some of them, but what, tell us a bit more about some of the benefits that you've seen to the business since being a part of the roundtable. I think, Chantal, it's, it's one basic thing is that you really know the numbers that like clubs in the industry are achieving because you can get very caught in a bubble thinking that you're doing really well and, and also in that bubble because other people tell you you're doing really well. 
And what you find out, because it's a very, very honest interchange for three days of ideas and input, that you find there's a lot of room for opportunity in certain parts of your business that you would have thought that you were really peeking at. So I would say that in addition to finding out, there's a lot of other things that are going on in the industry. And our, ta- our round table has 16 clubs in it that you find out what's going on before other people in the industry do. And, and they, and in the round table, everybody shares everything. So from how it started, how it's completed, uh, and, and it's a full sharing of ideas. So it's, it's really an amazing way that the group operates at the Rex Roundtable. Absolutely. That's a huge advantage. Talk to us about the other side of things. Have there been any kind of challenges that you've faced during the time that you've been part of the group? And, and if so, how did you overcome them? Well, I, I guess you could say that the economy was not good news. And at the time, around 2010, there was uh, increased levels of competition that, that can impact the business. However, because you have that opportunity to be with the group three times a year, you realize you need to focus on your business and, and what you represent in the health and fitness industry. And yes, the economy may not be great, but you have to work through it. And there's going to be increased levels of competition and you just have to make sure that you're stronger. And based on the strong relationships uh, with our clubs that run businesses, we find out how they've struggled and we all struggle together. And and sometimes we keep ourselves accountable and say, you know, get over it. The economy is the economy, competition is the competition, but how are you running your business? And we keep each other very accountable to making sure that we stay focused on what's going to be successful for each one of our businesses. Kevin, tell me, what are two tips that you have for anyone that's interested in joining Rex Roundtables? There's two tips that I would recommend. One is make sure that you will commit the time necessary, not just to be there at the round table three times a year, but do the preparation and be ready to participate. That's number one. And number two is work with Rex and Eddie and Will to make sure that the group that you are going to get into is the right group for your type of business. And they're really good at doing that, but make sure it's going to achieve what you needed to achieve so that you can have the success that is necessary, that gets the ROI and the use of your time, you know, at its maximum uh, levels. Listeners, I don't know, know about you, but I am convinced <laughs> the Rex Roundtables, what a fantastic testimonial. Kevin McHugh, thank you so much for joining us today on the Fitness Business Podcast. Well, thank you, Chantel, for having me. And listeners, just a quick reminder that we will put all of the contact details uh, for Rex Roundtable so you can check that out on today's show notes. So make sure you head over and check that out on fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Don't forget our current giveaway. We have two ways you can win a prize just by listening to the Fitness Business Podcast. As usual, you can win our giveaway just by subscribing to the show. You head over to www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and click on subscribe in the right-hand corner and that is your entry. Otherwise, just tell us your number one insight from listening to one of the shows. Now, you can leave that comment either in the show notes of your favorite show or of this week's show. You can leave a comment on our Facebook page. You can tweet us at Fitbiz Podcast. You can even pop a comment under any of our Instagram posts and our account there is Fitness Business Podcast. So there are loads of places you can tell us your insight and every time you tell us, you get an entry in the draw. So what's the amazing prize we're giving away? Well, over December and January, we're giving away Michelle Seagal's book, No Sweat. Michelle is a guest on show 33, which comes out on January the 1st. We will be giving away one book to a new subscriber and one book to someone who shares their number one insight. So jump on now and comment or subscribe. As mentioned during my interview with Molly, it was my pleasure to recently chat to Pam O'Donnell, the Vice President of Member Experience and Development for URSA. During this chat, Pam explains why URSA 2016 should be on your event calendar for next year. Okay, Pam, thanks so much for joining us once again on the Fitness Business Podcast. Now, do you want to tell us about the URSA Convention? Sure. The URSA convention is going to be in Orlando, Florida for the first time this coming March 21st through the 24th. And there's really a lot of excitement about the new location from attendees all over the world. It's really a fun and exciting event to learn and network. And knowing that everyone learns differently, we have a lot of different formats to choose from throughout the four days. 
There'll be 20 minute fast break sessions to start the day, high energy keynotes, round tables, panel discussions, tutorials, and exercise classes. And then for the last couple of years, we've added a new feature, which is Ignite. And in, in those sessions, a variety of speakers each have five minutes and 20 slides to present about an idea or a concept they're really passionate about. So it's a really fun and different way to get a lot of new ideas. There's also a lot of opportunities for networking, whether it's the Women's Leadership Summit, the Making Connections Orientation, Planet Ursa for the international attendees, and any number of receptions and, and events during the week. For people who've been in the industry for a long time, it's a chance to see old friends and get re-energized. And for those who are new to the industry, it's really inspiring and where people get a real idea of what's happening on with the industry as a whole. And really the trade show brings that home. I've been doing this for years now and I'm always blown away by the trade show. So you picture six football fields, eight if you're talking American football, <laughs> and they're filled with all kinds of gadgets, equipment, supplies and services, and their classes on the floor, so the energy is really contagious. Pam, I love the sound of that Ignite session that you mentioned. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I actually, a few of us saw that at a, we actually have an association for associations. And when we were at one of our conventions, we saw it being done. And it really is kind of fun. And people really have a good time. And you get all kinds of ideas on service, health promotion ideas. It, it, it's really been a great way to learn. It sounds very cool. Okay. So you mentioned, you know, like people that have attended Ursa before and those of us that would be new, who should be attending Ursa in 2016, would you say? Sure. Anyone who's involved in the fitness industry, whether it's owners, managers, department heads, or even frontline club staff. Of course, there's the industry suppliers and distributors, but it's really anyone who's looking to be involved or learn more about the fitness industry. We expect that there'll be about 13,000 fitness industry professionals joining us in Orlando, and it's really the best place to meet and network with club operators and suppliers from all over the world. So you mentioned the word learn in there. What will attendees learn at Ursa in, in 2016? Sure. This is really the place to learn industry best practices. There'll be different tracks on everything from customer service and retention to sales and marketing to technology and social media. There are also tracks on fitness and personal training, programming, health promotion and wellness, and research and industry trends. And of course, there are sessions on management and operations and a full agenda geared towards industry leaders. With nine tracks in total, it's like having nine conferences, each focused on different critical aspects of running a fitness business, all rolled into one event. And the keynotes and many of the concurrent sessions will be translated into Chinese, Japanese, Russian, and Spanish. And really, you can't forget about the trade show as a learning experience. You'll find out about the latest technology and products, witness the latest trends firsthand, and have the opportunity for in-depth conversation with suppliers. And really the suppliers are a great resource for information. They're out in the field all year long and they're seeing all kinds of different clubs. And they, so they really have a lot of good insight and ideas to share with the attendees. Now, I know one of the great things about the conference is of course the presenters. So do you wanna give us an idea of who's actually presenting on the agenda next year? Absolutely, we're really excited about the agenda we've put together. And really, Ursa has always been known for finding keynotes that are on the cutting edge. They may or may not have been household names, but they always deliver thought-provoking concepts and ideas. This year will be no different with the keynotes. We have Jay Baer on smart marketing, Greg McEwen on leadership essentials, Randy Zuckerberg on trends affecting your business, and Nara Yell on creating habit-forming products. And then we have a lot of speakers people know and love, like Rick Caro, Deborah Sienna, Alan Leach, and Justin Tamsit. They'll all be among the many favorites. And there'll also be 40 new speakers joining the program this year. And they're from all over the world, and they're both inside and outside the industry, and they include university faculty. That sounds really exciting and, and great to hear that JT's in the lineup again next year. And so last but certainly not least, Pam, what should people do if they want more information or if they want to book their tickets to attend? Sure. Just need to go to ursa.org backslash convention. You can email membership at ursa.org 
or call anyone on the membership team at 1-617-951-0055. We're really looking forward to seeing everyone in Orlando this March. Very, very exciting. And needless to say, we will definitely putting the links to all of those details as booking information in today's show notes. So Pam, thank you so much for joining us and telling us all about URSA 2016. Oh, thanks, Chantal. It's always great talking to you. All the very best for a fantastic conference. We look forward to hearing how it goes. It's time for the Fitness Business Podcast Wrap. Well, that is nearly us done for our second Women in Fitness show for December. But before we say goodbye, here's a reminder on some of the great takeaways from Molly Kammer. She told us that when looking for a business coach, make sure you interview them to ensure that they have the same values and ethics as you do. If you're willing to do what it takes to set and to accomplish goals, then it's worth the investment in a business coach or a business group to support you. Always look within in your organisation for support. Are there opportunities for further education or courses that you can take advantage of? She reminded us that if an opportunity is extended to you, say yes, go for it. If given a chance, take it. And last but not least, she told us to surround yourself with people that are better than you. They will raise you to another level. Ask them to challenge you and that's how you will grow. Before we go, don't forget, over December and January, we're going to give you the chance to win a copy of the Michelle Seagar book, No Sweat. To win, all you need to do is either subscribe to the show notes on fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or tell us your number one insight from listening to one of the shows during December or January. It's that easy. Don't waste time. This is a fantastic book, trust me. And it's for you and for your clients, yeah? They'll both enjoy it. So the winners will be announced in show 37, which comes out on the 29th of January, 26. 16. Thanks for joining me for another week. I hope you have a fantastic week up ahead. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. You have been listening to the world's number one podcast called the Fitness Business Podcast, brought to you by Active Management. We are dedicated to helping your fitness business hashtag grow in 2015. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au for resources, tools, and more to help you. And by far, the best value for you is to become a member. So join today at www.activemgmt.com.au.